Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! Resolve. In the last episode, we cornered Judge Jigoku, and we didn't really establish that he was the killer, but we established that uh, Inspector Gregson was killed in his cabin on the SS Grouse. And now we're here, and we are about to decide whether the idea that the victim's murder could have been committed by Prosecutor Asugi is possible? Or impossible. So that's the thing because I think this is very important and I want to put a little bit more thought into this because at the end of the last episode I said it was possible but if we think about it if we actually think about it the thing is that uh, he has his he tried to kind of open the trunk apparently and if he would kill him why would he do so with a revolver so I think we have to go with something here that is actually kind of not obvious and not being obvious also he said that he left the crime scene so hmm with that in mind I'm gonna go with, opposed to, as I said in the last episode, not possible, but impossible. So let's do that. Judge Goku, let me remind you of something you said only a few minutes ago. You claimed that logical reasoning is the future of the judicial pr process. It is, no question. Well, logical reasoning can prove something here. Namely that it would have been impossible for Prosecutor Asuge to commit the crime. What? The court would only accept an argument that is supported by compelling evidence. So present what you have, counsel. What proof is there that allegedly demonstrates the impossibility of Prosecutor Asuge's involvement? Well, I said that I think uh, it's the evacuation drill. So if we have a look here, all crew members are required to assemble on the main deck in order to review evacuation bro. The drill will take 20 minutes. Although no, I think it's... I'm gonna present the tr... Although wait a second. I mean... Hmm... Following the departure... Notice about practice evacuation to be carried out by the crew of the SS Grouse the night before the ship arrived in Dover. And it was put... Hmm... Now I'm gonna go with the trunk. Take that! You're making the evidence weep here, Rinosuke Narohodo. Sorry? Every piece of evidence has a role to play in arriving at the truth. They're not play a thing you can toss around the courtroom for entertainment. Oh, oh okay, that, that, okay, so it's not... Never mind the evidence. You're about to make me weep, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh no, I can't upset Susato-san. Or I'll end up being upset too. Oh, <laughs> oh. We know a member of the crew was on sentry duty outside the first class cabins nearly all the time. So as long as the guard was there, it would have been impossible to fire a shot without it being heard. And that very much narrows down when the crime could have been committed. The court will only accept an argument that is supported by compelling evidence, so present what you have, counsel. Yeah, okay. So, it, it must be the drill itinerary then. Blah, 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 blah. Because that was the only time that the shot could have been fired without being noticed by a crew member. So it must be the, uh, the, the drill itinerary. Itinerary. This itinerary, <laughs> itinerary, itinerary. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. That I, that that word just hurts me. Nevertheless, for crew members of the SS Grouse, my lord, this is conclusive proof. An itinerary? How does that prove anything? Judge Goku, the moment you acknowledge that you found the victim's body in your cabin, this itinerary suddenly became much more significant. What? What? Why? 
On the night in question, as always, a crewman's sentry was on guard outside your cabin door. As long as he was there, nobody could have fired a shot inside the cabin. Absolutely, because it's inconceivable that the guard wouldn't have heard it and come to investigate. So that tells us that the crime must have taken place when the guard was elsewhere. And that narrows it down to the 20 minutes just after 10 o'clock, as indicated in the itinerary. Yes, I see no flaw in your reasoning so far. But the crucial point is this, when the evacuation drill took place. The steamshed had already put sea from the port of Dunkirk. Oh. Now, clearly the murder could only have been committed by somebody who was aboard the vessel at the time. But Prosecutor Asugi stated in yesterday's proceedings, I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life, so I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at boarding house in the town and returned to England the following morning. Which I'm sure the court will agree is conclusive proof that Kazuma Asugi couldn't possibly have carried out the killing. <sighs> No, absolutely not. I don't accept that at all. What do you mean? The boy's just saying that to exonor ox exonerate himself. We can trust that he really is a parked vessel. Obviously, after left my cabin, he hid himself somewhere nearby on the ship. Just waiting, waiting for his chance to come back and... No, that's out of the question. Isn't it, Kazuma? As the defense rightly recalls, I disembarked the vessel and spent the night in a boarding house in Dunkirk. And as I said yesterday, I signed my name in the accommodations reg register book. All extremely easy to verify, and undeniable proof! Oh no, I... There's no escape this time! You can forget that you're a judge or a government minister. It's time you gave the court an honest answer as a common man. You killed Inspector Tobias Gregson and transported his corpse back to Britain. Then you dumped the body in the room on Fresno Street and made it look as if the murder had happened there. That's what really happened, isn't it? Seishiro Jigoku! It was that damn trial ten years ago. That's when all this began. Looking back now, my fate was decided that day. I was doomed already. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to Super Saiyan. It's over! My life is over! He's going to Super Saiyan mode? A British assassin to eliminate a professor in Japan. A Japanese assassin to eliminate a detective in Britain. Both assassins will use diplomatic immunity to wait conviction and return safely to their homelands. The assassin exchange request arrived from Britain about one year ago. Though it was hardly a request, it was a demand. And for that, you decided to recruit Mr. Asugi? But things didn't go according to plan. You chosen them. Your chosen assassin never made it to Britain. And you found yourself unable to dispatch a replacement. Because I was already on my way to Britain at that time in Kazuma's place. And that left me with only one option for carrying out my obligation. To eliminate the mark myself, personally. Of course, there was but a single opportunity for me to do that. The International Forensic Science Symposium, I presume? That's right. I decided it would be safest to carry out the plan before my arrival in Britain. So I enlisted, in the, enlisted the help of my British counterpart. And made arrangements for a pretext that would take the inspector to Dunkirk. To lure the man in, he was given a sham mission by the Reaper. Wh what? The Reaper? 
But there's only one person who could have done that. The mastermind of the entire operation. The Reaper himself. Oh. So, that means that the assassin exchange was... It was all planned by the Reaper! I'm not at liberty to say anything about my British counterpart. Anyway, the inspector accepted the Reaper's mission and dutifully infiltrated my cabin on the steamship. But it was all a trap designed to lead him to France and his own death. Oh, how awful! It was past nine o'clock when I returned to my cabin from the dining hall that evening. I didn't give him time to attack me. I choked him until he lost consciousness. But there was a guard just outside the door, so I left it at that for the time being. Even the slightest noise might have aroused suspicion, so I bided my time, waiting. For the 20 minutes after 10 o'clock? I had intended to finish him by strangulation, but moments before I had the chance, he suddenly came around and went for me in a reckless mood. I'd received the British issue gone 16 years earlier, being a member of the judiciary as a visiting student. I never imagined I'd have to use it for something like that. So the revolver belongs to you, does it? Then the victim was killed inside your cabin on the SS grounds? Which begs the question of why you arranged for his body to be discovered in the room on Fresno Street? The young judicial assistant over there has already answered that question. There was no way I could take the body up on deck to throw it over the side. That's precisely where all the crewmen were gathered for the evacuation drill. So before the first class cabin sentries returned, I took the course to the refriger refrigeration room. And then on arriving in Dover, you concealed the body in your trunk in order to smuggle it past the border police? I knew I needed to take steps if the police were to be convinced when the body was found in London. In that case, you must have known. You must have had intimate details of Inspector Gregson's intended shadow. Yes, my British counterpart sent me everything I needed to know. The inspector was due at Fresno Street at 5 o'clock that afternoon. In order to meet a man by the name of Hugh Boo, from whom he would take back his police identification. Ah! I decided that man would be the perfect person to set up as the culprit. So I took a hackney carriage over there with the body still in my trunk. That must have been just after we took this photograph with you at the hotel then. Yes, I wasn't expecting a welcome in Kamati. I was more than a little nervous. On Fresno Street, I spotted a young girl selling little firecrackers. Miss Venus, of course. I conceived of the candle trick there and then, so I donned a simple disguise and approached the girl to buy enough firecrackers to replicate a gunshot. What sort of disguise? For some reason, the inspector had a bright red hairpiece in his own traveling case, so I put that on, although I suspect I drew more attention to myself than that than I would have otherwise. The hairpiece we found at the scene. The inspector had it all ready for the red-headed league investigation. I only arrived at the room at around quarter to five, so I quickly placed the body on the floor, moved the notice board, and set up my little candle trick. I arranged it so the firecrackers would go off with a bang around 15 minutes later. So that Mr. Boone, who was due to arrive at five, would walk straight into a trap? Except, at the last moment, I made a careless blunder. What was that? I imagine it was the bag of fish and chips. Huh? I didn't notice that it had fallen out of his overcoat pocket when I moved the body to the refrigerator key room. I put it back into his pocket the following morning, but... Well, it seems the warmth of the heated cabin had accelerated the decay of the fish. Anyway, that's... That's everything. All the sordid details of what I did. Oh, man.
man. Oh, okay, you can hear the fire truck outside. Sorry, guys. I've heard enough. We've arrived at the truth about the murder of one of the country's most capable and respected police inspectors. The witness will be tried in the coming days. For a crime of such a wild nature, you can expect the most severe penalty. An exchange of assassins? What a foolhardy idea! Mr. Jigoku, one last detail. Who was your counterpart in Britain? Who was the mastermind behind the assassin exchange? Nothing you say now can make matters any worse for you. Just tell us! Enough! I've already told you that I cannot say. Even though as things stand, you may very well never set foot in your homeland again. What are you waiting for? Can't we get this over with now? It's finished. All of it. I'm finished. Then, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I now pronounce the findings of this court. This man before us has admitted to the willful murder of Tobias Gregson. Seichiruj Goku, it is the opinion of this court that you should be found. And may I remind all those present of the strict confiden confidentiality demanded by this closed court. Uh, uh, by the way, I forgot. Uh, he, he, of course, I mean, you saw he was found guilty. Which is very weird because we're trying Barak von Zeeks here. Mm, whatever. There's no way this is over. Moments ago, Mr. Jigoku signed a written confession, admitting to the murder of, the inspect of Inspector Gregson and the subsequent conveyance of the body. In short, the defendant's innocence has therefore been established beyond doubt. Oh, wonderful! Well done, Mr. Nodohoto! Yes, um, thank you. Is something wrong? I'm just a little troubled by his silence. The true identity of the Reaper of the Bailey and this extraordinary assassin exchange. We do remain in the dark about these mysteries, however. Insofar as the indictment brought against the defendant in this trial, we have reached a conclusion. I have every intention of pursuing both mysteries. As a prosecutor. As you wish. Now, for the formal education. I hereby declare the defendant Barak von Zeeks. Objection! The prosecution calls for education to be deferred. Counsel? The accused's innocence hasn't been fully established at all. And therefore, it would be wrong to deliver a verdict at this time. That is the prosecution's unwavering position! W what But! Jachigoku has already confessed! Nevertheless, Barak von Zeeks has committed crimes for which he must be punished. Well... It would appear you have information that the court needs to hear, Prosecutor Asogi. Certainly, the murder of Inspector Gregson was actually carried out by Seishiro Jigoku. But it's clear from the witness's testimony that he was coerced into complying with the plot. Into this sick, merciless assassin exchange. That... that may be true, but... So what I want to know is, who coerced Jigoku? Who was pulling the strings? The victim went to France, having been ordered on a mission for the Reaper, 
only to be murdered. In other words, the mastermind behind the assassin exchange is someone in a position to give such an order. As we've already established, the Reaper himself. Well, certainly, that would appear to follow. The prosecution hereby formally accuses the man in the dock, Barak von Zeeks, of being the Reaper of the Bailey. And furthermore, I'm going to prove his guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. What? What? Ooh. Order, order, order. The Reaper of the Bailey is a long standing mystery council. Are you suggesting you have some new information with which to build a case? Scotland Yard has already investigated Lord Van Zeeks very thoroughly in that regard. And they found no evidence whatsoever to substantiate the claim that he is the Reaper. Perhaps, but circumstances have now changed. What do you mean? It's already been established that the assassin exchange was negotiated with the Jigoku by the Reaper himself. Which means, we now have a new line of questioning by which to identify definitively the man's identity. That is the prosecution's intention here. I must say I'm surprised by quite how tenaciously you appear to want to besmirch my name. You are guilty of an unforgivable crime, Lord Von Zeeks. And I will bring you to justice for it, whatever it takes. That explains Kazuma's silence before. He'll stop at nothing to punish what Lord Von Zeeks unwittingly started ten years ago. Very well. Whilst it's extremely irregular, I will on this occasion grant the prosecution further opportunity for witness testimony. The defendant will disclose any and all involvement he, involvement he has had with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. I thank you, my lord, for guiding the court so wisely. I hereby declare this court to be in session for a supplementary hearing. Pray turn a blind eye to the discourtesies I verify that this wild and unremitting accusation has not sore sour the contents of my hollow chalice. Lord von Zeeks! I first had to suffer the pseudonym of the Reaper ten years ago now. And ever since that time, I've endured the wine or the weight of implied guilt that's gone with it. So I welcome the chance to testify now and crush those allegations once and for all. Good. Then, I'll let, then let justice decide, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution seeks to begin building its case by calling the accused to the stand as the primary witness in order that he may answer the accusation brought by the prosecution that he is the Reaper of the Bailey. And what says the defense? Putting the defendant in the witness stand can be extremely dangerous. And Kazuma Sama is so emotional at the moment, he's not thinking logically. You're right that he's not himself, but I knew it would be like this, and I came here today to determine, today determined to face him through whatever might arise, as a lawyer and as his friend. Then that's what we must do. The defense has no objection, my lord. Very well, defendant, you will take the witness stand and give formal testimony on the subject of your involvement with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. As you wish, my lord. Ooh. Okay. Witness testimony, the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. Okay, things got really sour here, but we're, we're gonna go through with that, guys. That's okay, so let's go. I've never taken the life of another nor have I instructed another to kill. 
I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Gregson's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fresno Street that day, and how I came to discover the body. The point is, no common thread exists between myself, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. Clearly, therefore, there's no reason to suspect me of being behind the assassin exchange. Hmm. So you deny all accusations by the prosecution. Both that you are the Reaper of the Bailey and that you masterminded the assassin exchange. I acknowledge that the public at large believe me to be the Reaper. However, that's a fallacy which I alone am in position to forswear. Naturally, the prosecution believes the testimony just given by the accused to be untrue. Grinoska Naruhodo? Yes? Let me ask you, why are you here? What really brings you to this courtroom? A desire to uncover the truth. Even if the truth proves your client to be guilty, From all my experiences in this courtroom, I've come to realize something. The truth can't be hidden. Sooner or later, it will come out. So it's always my intention to work with my client in pursuit of the truth. I want you to remember what you just said. Enough, dilator! Dilatory tre- Dila- Dilat- Tory chatter? Sorry guys, I'll, I'll try again. Enough dilatory chatter. Dilatory, dilatory, yeah, dilatory. Okay, okay, once again, sorry. Enough dilatory chatter. Counsel for the defense, proceed to cross -exama examine the witness. Uh, yes, my lord. I know exactly what you're thinking, Kazuma. I know you're just waiting to point it out. The contradiction you've con uh, you're con you convinced lies somewhere within this man's testimony. Cross-examination! Alright guys, the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. We haven't just hit the half hour mark yet, but we are very close. S so therefore, I think it's a good opportunity to call it quits for this episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolved. If you want to see how the cross-examination is going to unfold, you'll have to tune in next time. See you then.